Hi, my name is Eric, and I love the weather. I love everything about the weather. Watching clouds roll in or a storm starting to strike, watching a hurricane come up the coast, forecasting it, or just going outside and playing in it. And I go to work every day to forecast that weather so you know what to do when you walk out the door. Hey, do I look familiar? Let's get right to our chief meteorologist, Eric Fisher. Eric? And at least it has been a brutal stretch that continues this evening. This is where the heaviest snow really starts to pick up. Everyone will wake up to a nice, fresh fall air mass tomorrow. But I definitely don't do it all by myself here at WBZ. We have a whole team to forecast the weather just for you. Everybody, say hello to Todd. Oh, hi. You guys surprised me. I didn't see you there. Welcome to our weather office. You know, winter, spring, summer, fall, there's all kinds of different weather, especially here in New England. So, what's your favorite weather? A blizzard of snow? <laughs> or a really mean storm! A soaking rain with big puddles. Or what about a perfect summer day? No matter where we are, weather is all around us. It affects where we go, how we do things, and when we do things. The weather can be cloudy, it can be clear, it can be wet or dry, it can be cold or hmm. Hot, of course. Hi kids, I'm Danielle. And just like Todd and Eric, I'm obsessed with the weather too. But there's one member of our team who's been doing this longer than any of us. I guess you could say I'm the I guess you could say I'm the veteran of our... <laughs> I guess you could say I'm the veteran of our... I guess you could say I'm the veteran of our team. I'm Barry Burbank. I've been a professional meteorologist for about 40 years, and I've been here at WBZ since 1978. This is our new man at the weather boards, Barry Burbank from Portland, Maine, a meteorologist. Welcome aboard. Thank, Thank you very much. To, uh... Watch out for the frost heat because they're becoming quite pronounced. 6 to 12 across much of the region. It's WBZ AccuWeather trivia time. What is the coldest temperature ever recorded in Boston? Is it A, negative 13 degrees Fahrenheit, B, negative 18 degrees, or C, negative 25 degrees. So, what's your guess? If you said B, then you're correct. It reached negative 18 degrees in Boston way back on February 9th, 1934. Three thirty a.m. That's what time I get into work every morning, so that I can be the first one to prepare you for your day. Let's go ahead and check in with Todd right now, standing by with a look at the forecast in the weather center. There, so hard at work. Hey there. Hey guys. Yeah, just putting the finishing touches on the uh, the show right here. We've got the snow coming in right now. I've got my maps in order. And weekdays aren't the only time we have to deliver a forecast weather happens on weekends too. That's right, while you guys are enjoying your weekend off from school, we're in here making sure you're covered rain or shine. Winter weather advisories are up for all the areas shaded in purple here. Then it's gonna stream on out of here. There isn't gonna be much of anything in northern New England. No matter what day of the week it is, everyone has to put on makeup to be TV ready. And everybody does it, even the boys. All right, Barry, how do I look? Perfect. You missed a spot right there, though, Todd. A little more foundation. All right. There it is. Got it. Right. Barry, your yeah. cheekbones look great. Thank you. <laughs> it's time again for WBZ AccuWeather Trivia. What is the hottest temperature ever recorded in Boston? Is it A, 101 degrees Fahrenheit, B, 104 degrees, or C, 110 degrees? The right answer is B. It reached 104 degrees in Boston on July 4th, 1911. So why is the weather so important? Well, if you think about it, the weather never sleeps like you and I do. It happens at night, in the middle of the day, in the evening or the morning. And so we always have to have someone watching and taking a look at what's going to happen. And this is where we do it all. Up here, all these numbers, different models showing us how much the sky cover will change throughout the day, when it will rain, when it will snow, what the temperature might be. Over here, we look at it in a different way. Pictures, visualizations, you can see where storms track and which days of the week they might be possible for us here in Massachusetts. And then over here, almost like a video game. 
These are all of our graphics that we build every day. And this is how we show the weather to you at home. To our eye scale, a two moderate impact cape in the islands, one to six inches of snow. There'll be some mixing going on. The morning drive in particular, the worst one here. What is the lifespan of a typical tornado? Is it A, 10 minutes, B, 30 minutes, or C, 60 minutes? The correct answer is A. A typical tornado lasts, on average, about 10 minutes, but it can last much longer and travel hundreds of miles. We're on the WBZ weather deck, where we have another important tool that we use to help forecast the weather, and it's called the Weather Bug Network. This network is made up of cameras at locations all across New England. And we can keep an eye on conditions even when we can't be there in person. We have cameras at ski areas, the airport, Fenway Park, and some of these weather bug stations are in schools all across the country, maybe even yours. Now it's one thing to tell you the weather, it's another to see what that means and how it all works. Because here at WBZ, we don't just like to give you the weather, we like to explain the weather too. That's why we brought you to our underground, top secret WBZ Weather Laboratory. <laughs> Okay kids, today we're gonna make a cloud in a bottle. You need three things to make a cloud. First, you need moisture, water vapor. You also need some particle for that water vapor to condense onto, like sand, dust, or even smoke. And lastly, you need to change the pressure. You need to make it colder or you need to make it warmer. So we're gonna start out here with this three liter bottle of soda, no soda in it. We have water in it, warm water, filled about a third of the way up. Now, right now you can't see moisture in here except for the liquid, but there's actually some gas in here that we call water vapor. In the gaseous state, you can't see it. Eventually, we will be able to see it when we make this cloud. We're gonna take the cap off here, and we're gonna light a match. Now, kids, do not do this at home, or at least have some parent or teacher supervision, please. So we're gonna light the match, and we're gonna hold this over the top for just a second or two, create a little smoke. Then we're gonna drop the match in, and Close it up real tightly so that the smoke gets trapped in there. At this point, we need to change the temperature because we have the moisture in there. We also have some particles in there for the moisture to condense onto. Now we're gonna squeeze and release. And there you have it. You can kind of see the little cloud forming in there. We have moisture to condense onto the smoke particles. And that's how you make a cloud in a bottle. Lightning strikes somewhere on Earth about 100 times every a, second, B, minute, or C, hour? The correct answer is A, 100 times every second. Add that all up, and that means there's a lightning strike somewhere on our planet about 8,640,000 times a day. Welcome to the Weather Center. This is like our classroom. It's where we study the weather with all of our computers and machines, technology. We even got our old weather almanac right here to look at past weather conditions. And it's how we get our forecast ready for you. And most of the tools that we use are right here in the office. But the coolest one is right around the corner in the studio. Let's go take a look at this. You won't believe how big our mod. Hey, what are you guys doing? I'm watch trying to give game. a tour here for the kids. Well, we can't watch the game. Later, later. Come on, guys. Get out of here. Get out of here. Barry, I expect more out of you. Meteorologist, you can't trust them. Great for Patriots games, but our 103-inch monitor is also great for weather graphics. This is what you actually see when you watch the news at home and how we kind of tell the weather story. Not just things like current temperature, but check this out. You can show things like the stormiest forecast ever. But this isn't the only tool that we have here at WBZ. And for more, we go over to Barry, who's standing at the green screen. I've worked hundreds of snowstorms since coming to WBZ well over 30 years ago. And get this, I've done this job for so long, I can even make it snow on command. Well, not really. Cool visual technology called the green screen allows us to make weather on demand. The green screen is just that, a big green wall our very own version of the Green Monster. Offred, Offred back, looking up, Pedroia's gone yard. Into the monster seats. The green screen allows us to put two images together, like me and a weather map. Or me 
and a tiger. Nice kitty, nice kitty. Or me flying through the sky. Oh, there's my house down there. And watch this, I can be invisible too. Hello. Hello. Woohoo! So if I wear the same green as the green screen, this hurricane runs right through me. Woo! Can you guess how many tornadoes Massachusetts averages each year? Is it A, one, B, two, or C, three? This one might surprise you. The correct answer is C, three. Way back in 1958, 12 tornadoes touched down in Massachusetts alone. Hey guys, Chef Meteorologist Todd Guttner here. You know, cooking up the perfect forecast isn't always easy. You need the right ingredients. So we here at WBZ, well, we add a little math with just a little bit of science. And then we take a whole bunch of our high test, high tech WBZ AccuWeather tools. And you can't forget about this. This is the secret ingredient, a pinch of instinct. Then you have to mix it all together just like this and voila, there you have it. The recipe for a perfect forecast. Doesn't that look great? Mwah! Magnifique. Gorgeous afternoon, sunset 745, soak up every minute of the day. And while all this forecasting and predicting may seem like magic, it's actually very scientific. Well, okay, maybe just a little bit of magic. What is the most snow ever recorded in Boston in one season? Is it A, 84.2 inches, B, 95.9 inches, or C, 107.6 inches? The right answer is C. 107.6 inches of snow fell in the winter of 1995 and 1996. That's about nine feet of snow almost as tall as a basketball hoop. Hi guys, so I'm back in our secret underground laboratory. You saw Todd here earlier making a cloud in a bottle, but I've got something pretty cool that I think you're gonna like, a tornado in a bottle. All you need is two tubes. These were Coke bottles. You peel the labels off, you get a little connector piece. Your parents can help you find it online, and then we make the magic happen. What I like to say is to build a tornado, you need wind, that winds around. So you can't just shake it, you have to have a spin, just like the atmosphere. So you turn the tube and you rotate it. That is the wind, in this case water, blowing in different directions that creates the vortex, that tornado that spins around and goes down the tube. We get two to three tornadoes on average in Massachusetts. So we can get them here, and it's important to know safe spots to be. In a basement is a good spot to be, Here's that spin, and there is a tornado in a bottle. Which of these insects can help you figure out the outside air temperature? Is it A, a cricket, B, a lightning bug, or C, a dragonfly? The answer is actually A. If you count the number of chirps a cricket makes in 15 seconds, then add 39, you get the actual current outside air temperature. So much for thermometers. So one of our favorite tools here at WBZ is rolling up behind me. It's the Mobile AccuWeather Lab. Danielle and Barry driving on by. Hey guys. Right, so today a nice sunny day to take a spin, but we take this out in the worst of the weather, the storms, the snow, so you can see what's going on in different towns. There's some cool stuff in the trunk as well. Todd's got to look at that. Thanks, Eric. Hey guys, come on over here. Take a look at this. So we open up the back of the Mobile Weather Lab, and in it is a really cool TV. You pull it out, and we're in live shots in the middle of storms. We can put all different kinds of graphics in here, like the seven-day forecast, temperatures, wind, big waves, you name it, we can put it right in there. Drier, cooler air works in for later on Friday and the rest of the weekend. And as you can see, Saturday and Sunday, looking beautiful. The Mobile Weather Lab has all kinds of great gadgets on the outside. We've got this LED screen here, and we have instruments, weather instruments on the top of the vehicle. Thermometer, anemometer, all that good stuff. But there's also some really good stuff inside. That's where we find Barry Burbank. Hey guys, come on in. Hey. 
So this is the inside of our, well, I guess you could call it a spaceship, the inside of the mobile AccuWeather lab. Now we can do all sorts of things here. For example, on this monitor here, we can see outside conditions, not only here outside the, the lab, but we can also tune into the WBZ Weatherbug Network to see what's going on at a, a bunch of schools all over the place. We have a camera outside so we can see what the camera is showing here and what the people at home can see. We have our computer here so we can get access to all this kind of data. We can put all that sort of information up here as well. We have all kinds of switches and buttons to push. It's really kind of cool to be in here. So uh, anyway, that's it. That's the inside of our mobile AccuWeather lab. So now you've seen the mobile AccuWeather lab, all the goodies inside and what it can do. We've taken this all over New England, even the top of Mount Washington. That's the tallest mountain in all of the Northeast. So stay tuned. You don't know where you might see us driving up to next. Snowflakes starting to fly and pick up here in Plymouth. We're out with the Mobile AccuWeather Lab. And we're coming to you from the top of the Northeast, Mount Washington, the middle of the ocean. That's where our job as meteorologists takes us sometimes. And we're out in the cranberry bogs of Plymouth this evening. Try to keep me inside in the daylight today. A great evening at Fenday Park. Look at that sunset. Which one of these is not the name of a real town? Is it A, Frostproof Florida, B, Snowflake Arizona, or C, Weathervane Vermont? If you guess C, then you're right. There is, however, a town in Vermont named Mosquitoville. Ugh, yikes. While forecasting is a lot of fun, it's also pretty tough. Some weather patterns aren't so predictable, and preparing a forecast for television can take hours. But once that red light goes on, you only have a few minutes to tell the weather story. Lots of layers are going to be needed again tomorrow morning. Kids at the bus stop frigid once again. And like a lot of your tests in school, our report card comes out the very next day. And here at WBZ, we're always shooting for an A+. With the help of all of our talented meteorologists here and our advanced AccuWeather system, we like to think we have the best and most accurate forecast in all of New England. But most of all, we love what we do, and we want to thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.